So, let us recall what was Holder's inequality. So, we had a, a number p between 1 and infinity and uh, q such that 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. Then for every um, a 1, A 2, some A n belonging to R and B 1, B 2, B n belonging to R, sigma of mod A i B i, I equal to 1 to n was less than or equal to sigma mod A i to the power p raised to power 1 over p and i equal to 1 to n sigma mod b i raised to power q raised to power 1 over q. All right. So, uh, this quantity we had called it as uh, norm of the vector a p th norm and this was called the norm B, the Q with norm, where you consider the vector A to be A 1, A 2, A n and B is the vector B 1, B 2, B n. So, this was a Holder's inequality, which is a generalization of cauchy schwarz inequality, which is when p is equal to q equal to 2. Uh, using this, we proved Minkowski's inequality. Of course, on R n, namely norm of A plus norm of B, P is less than norm A, norm B. Right? So, that gave us uh, as a consequence of this, this gives a metric on R n, namely distance p the vectors a and b is equal to norm of a minus p for a d belonging to r n. Right? So, that gave us the notion of distance. Um, generalizing the notion of uh, the Euclidean norm when p is equal to 2. So, for every p between 1 and infinity, one gets a notion of a distance. Okay. All right. What we want to do is we want to uh, extend it further than R n. Okay. So, we had started doing that. So, let us uh, consider R infinity. So, that is all sequences so, you can consider this as the space of all sequences real sequences right. Now, of course, uh, if you want to copy uh, this uh, notion of uh, the norm which may not make sense because the number of terms uh, in that summation become infinite. So, one has to restrict as we saw. So, we look at what is called L p. So, that is all x in x n 
all sequences such that norm of mod x i to the power p uh, on to infinity is finite, that this sum is finite. So, let us just uh, put the claim which we had already looked at, but anyway let us uh, prove it again that L p is a vector space over reals and for every sequence x n belonging to L p define the norm p equal to we have a p i equal to 1 to infinity raised to power 1. So, we are just copying uh, the norm of R n, the p norm in R n and of course, we have to restrict it to all uh, sequences which are those p th power, this is, this is a series of non-negative numbers which is convergent and it should be finite. So, we will uh, also look at series uh, sooner, soon uh, convergence of series, but for time being. We are saying that the partial sums converge, okay, right. So, this is finite. So, the claim is, is a vector space over R, okay. So, that means what if we define this then 1 for uh, x y belonging to L p. So, what does it mean? We want to say that L p alpha x plus beta y also belongs to L p. And the triangle inequality holds namely alpha x plus beta y p is less than mod alpha times norm of x is beta times norm of y p. So, basically uh, the idea of the proof goes as uh, in the case of R n first step should be to extend holders inequality from R n summation 1 to n to 1 to infinity and then using that proof Minkowski's inequality because that proof does not require anything else other than the holders inequality. So, let us just uh, prove holders inequality. So, this needs the holders inequality for for L p. One should say uh, not L p for R infinity, let us write. So, what does it mean? That means, for sequences x, x n, y equal to y n. So, what does holder inequality in R infinity will mean is the following in R infinity given two elements such that this x belongs to L p and y belongs to L q 1 over p plus 1 over q equal to 1. Then sigma mod x i y i i equal to 1 to infinity is less than or equal to the corresponding norm. So, that is mod of x i to the power p sigma i equal to 1 to infinity raised to power 1 by p and sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mod y i raised to power q raised to power 1 over q.
And so, that is perfect uh, generalization namely, so this is x to the power p and y to the power q, right, p th norm and the q th norm. So, this is same as this. Right. So, the idea is how do you extend uh, that inequality? We have for R n we already have it. So, let us note. So, note. So, proof of this for every n if we just take the sum from 1 to n mod x i y i then this is less than or equal to by the holders inequality on R n this is less than or equal to mod y i raised to power k over raised to power 1. So, this is uh, by holders inequality for R n, right. When the sums are finite up to n, then this holds. Now, this is uh, something which is done very often in uh, uh, analysis the left hand side here is less than or equal to the right hand side for every n, right. So, on the right hand side let n go to infinity, keep the left hand side n as it is and let right. So, let n go to infinity in right hand side of star, okay. That means that then sigma i equal to 1 to n that essentially means is less than or equal to sigma 1 to infinity to the power p raised to power 1 over p. So, y i raised to power q raised to power 1 by q. Right. Uh, essentially, it means this is adding up non-negative numbers. Right. If we increase n, that will be less than or equal to the right hand side. Okay. So sums will increase, and they all for every n, it will be less than or equal to this quantity. And now this holds for every n. Now let n go to infinity in the left hand side of the inequality. So on this side left hand side let n go to infinity implying that sigma <coughs> i equal to 1 to infinity mod x i y i is less than or equal to this quantity. So, it's sigma i equal to 1 on the right hand side which is as it is before. So, the idea is that uh, essentially we are letting n go to infinity on this inequality, okay, holders inequality for R n, but the justification comes from the fact that we can let the n go to infinity on the right hand side first and these quantities are finite by the given hypothesis. So, for every n this holds and we can let n go to infinity. So, that proves uh, holders inequality. So, this is equal to Okay. So, that proves holders inequality for uh, R infinity in the sense that if you got sequences say that the sequence x is p th power summable and y is um, q th power summable where 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1 then the corresponding result for holders inequality holds. And using this so as a consequence of this one proves Minkowski's inequality in L p 1 less than p less than infinity. Proof is same there is no change at all other than writing 
using holders inequality at appropriate place right so we will not repeat the proof and that says for every x y belonging to lp x plus y also belongs to lp and is less than or equal to right so uh, we get on a lp a metric so we get on lp namely for every x belonging to lp you have uh, x and y belonging to you want to define a matrix so let us write for x and y belonging to lp define d of x y to be equal to minus y p. So, in Minkowski's case inequality says this is precisely is a metric it has triangle inequality property. So, what I am trying to show is that uh, whatever you do in R 2 you can do the same thing in R n and same thing is in R infinity right. It is a quite interesting mathematically to ask the question. So, we had the real line we had R n and we had L p which is a subset of R infinity. So, if we had the notion of absolute value you had the notion of norm of x to the power p and here also we had the norm of x to the power p. Basically here it is 1 to n and here it is 1 to infinity. The interesting thing is uh, one can go beyond this and what should be right. So, the idea is this R infinity uh, treat. So, here is the R infinity as the set so x what is R infinity that is a set of all sequences right. Let us interpret each sequence slightly differently and you will see how this change of interpretation. So, let us look at all functions defined on natural numbers taking values in R and what is f of n is denoted as x n. So, a sequence is treated as a function from the set of natural numbers two real numbers. So, every n goes to a point in R n that you call as x n. So, when is a function known completely if you know its images. So, knowing a function f is same as knowing x n for every n. Okay. So, that is the interpretation for sequences treating a sequence of real numbers as a function on the set of natural numbers. And here this infinity so, infinity is equal to how many elements are there in n natural numbers they are countably infinite right. So, that is the infinity. Uh, I hope you all know what is called countable infinite and the set of natural numbers you want to say how many are there you assign a number to it. Uh, which is uh, called Aleph naught and it is denoted by this symbol this is called Aleph naught. Aleph is a Greek letter and naught is ok. So, this is uh, in some sense the first infinity you count 1, 2, 3, 4 n go on counting and you reach a something visualize a something infinity 
So, that is counting and going on, right, not stopping. So, this is called, so n is countably infinite. One says L is countably infinite and the cardinality of it or the number of elements is L of naught. So, this is you can think of as a infinity. So, instead of R infinity, we like to write it as it is better to write it as L of naught. So, this is a better notation for R infinity. Okay. And this L of naught is the cardinality of the set of natural numbers that is an indexing set and that is a domain here coming. So, this gives us a way of extending. So, define instead of natural numbers, let us put some something, any set x. And what is this? So, these are all functions x to r. f of x belongs to r for every x. So, we are just r to the power infinity, right? Oh, sorry, l f naught or this is same as r to the power n natural numbers, if you want it as a set. So, generalize it, uh, just replace. So, this is the definition. What is r to the power x, right? Where x is any set. So, you can, one can interpret it that way. For example, if x is equal to r, so what is r to the power r? That is all functions from real line to real line. What is r to the power a b? That is all functions f from interval a b to r, right? So, there is an another way of saying what is this object. So, now let us uh, look at uh, this R x. So, consider I am just uh, trying to illustrate the way uh, mathematicians think and generalize. So, R infinity uh, we had and we have defined R to the power x. Right. So, these are all functions f from x to r. I want to copy that uh, idea. L p, L 2, right. I want to copy that ideas. We had the notion of L 1, right. We had L 2 that is a ordinary uh, Euclidean distance. We had L infinity that is the supremum, right. We can try to copy all of them on this set now. So, let us try to copy this. So, let us first one for a function f x to r, I want to define what should be this thing. For x n, for uh, for the function defined on R n, right? So what is R n? That is same as f defined on one two up to n to R, right? N components. And what was uh, this thing defined? For a function, for a vector, we looked at the supremum of the components. For a function, what are the components? They are infinite, they are as many as. So, you can treat for every x belonging to x, f of x as its component, xth component you can think it of, right. So, if you think it a function as a vector with as many components as the number of elements in the set, then for every x, f of x the value is the component, that is what is happening in sequences, that is what is happening in vectors. So, look at the xth component, look at the mod of that and we want to take the supremum. So, let us take the supremum of this where x belongs to x. So, copying that supremum thing, right. 
but the problem comes this supremum may not exist because we know the completeness property of real numbers says every non empty subset of real numbers which is bounded above will have a supremum so this set may not be bounded above so one has to restrict now instead of rx right so restrict so look at all functions x to r such that supremum x belonging to x mod fx is finite now you see automatically those similar conditions we had put earlier when sigma mod xi square is finite x i to the power p is finite. So, for functions we should put this condition. So, what are such functions? If a function f x to r whose supremum exists that means it is a bounded function that is same as this is equal to set of all bounded functions on x right. So, one just writes m x r ok. You can write uh, any notation you can write b here to indicate ok let us write b instead of m. Let us write b x uh, that may look like a ball of radius something. So, let me let us write uh, some funny b called script b ok. Okay, how do you write script B? Okay. Ah. Script B X R is all functions f x to R f bounded. right and for any function f belonging to b x r we can define to be equal to supremum x belonging to x mod of f x and this becomes uh, this is a norm on b x r giving a metric. So, it gives a metric uh, so what is a metric as well once norm magnitude is defined the metric is so d infinity f g is equal to norm of f and g belonging to b x r. So, uh, basic idea is defining a norm absolute value for uh, 